good morning team so today we are going to learn about prep 3 which is an overview about the business analysis concepts so in this prep 3 we have two parts like part 1 and part 2 so today we are going to discuss about part 1 and tomorrow we'll be having part 2 okay so is my voice is clear to everyone yes yes okay So uh, these are the guidelines of the session. So all the questions of yours will be answered once the session will be completed. And the participants are requested to message your doubts in the chat box only. And this session will be recorded and will be updated in the CUPD YouTube channel. Okay. So in this prep three part one, we have some questions which is related to overview about the business analysis concepts. So this is a question number one, which is nothing but a customer can make a payment either by card or uh, by wallet or by cash or by net banking. So draw a use case diagram. So uh, as usual, as we have already learned this in the prep one part two, so where we have drawn the use case diagram, right? For the online application uh, store. So where uh, for any payment application will be there. So once the customer will be initiating the payment, so the he will be connected to the payment initiated to the server. And here uh, we are going to use the relationship called generalization, right? So for a, wherever you can see the payment option. So as we have different modes of payment, but we have to select only one method uh, by the customer and then only he can move forward. So which is nothing but a generalization, which, is, which means generalization means is a kind of. Um, so this via ca cash, via net banking, via UPI or wallet or by debit or credit card. So this is nothing but a, uh, any one mode of payment. Okay, these are all the payment options. So uh, any one he has to select and then he can move forward with that. So here we are going to select the any one mode of payment to complete the payment part. Next. Question number two. So question number two is about what is boundary classes, controller classes and entity classes. So question number two for boundary control and entity, first of all, write a definition of it like a, a boundary class, which is used to handle the interaction between the system and external actor. So that is the diagram of the boundary class and a controller class, which acts as an intermediary between the boundary and entity classes. And entity class will represent the core data and business logic of the application. So, uh, so here what you have to do is like, first of all, write all the definitions, try to extend it in five to six lines in the uh, document, like for the evaluation. And you can come up with the diagrams and the examples for these three classes, then you can complete this answer. Okay, next. So third question will be about explain domain model for customer making payment through net banking. So first of all, write what is mean by the domain model and then you can go with the diagram part. So a domain model is a conceptual model that defines the structure, uh, relationships and behavior of the entities of uh, uh, behavior of entities within a specific problem domain. Okay, so this is a definition for it. So write, try to write the definition in uh, two to three lines more and you can draw the diagram for the net banking. Next. So what is sequence diagram? So sequence diagram is a type of interaction diagram which is used in software engineering and systems designed to illustrate how processes operate with one another and in what order. So this sequence diagram, you can draw it in the MS Visio tool. With the help of MS Visio, you can draw this sequence diagram where you'll be having the module called sequence in that. So where you can select that one, uh, the module in the sequence, uh, in the MS Visio tool, and then you can draw the diagram for it. You can take a small uh, example regarding the customer is making a payment through net banking system. Uh, so how the payment is initiating the process, you can do it in the, you can show it in the uh, MS Visio tool. Okay. Next. What is conceptual model? So a conceptual model is a high level representation of a system that will help in understanding, visualizing and communicating the essential aspects of a domain. So it provides a clear and simplified view of the domain, which makes it easier to understand. And the key elements of a conceptual model are 
entities means customer product order and payment attributes customer id name email phone number relationships for example a customer will places an order okay so in this way you can write and explain what is meant by the conceptual model okay next what is meant by mvc architecture so the mvc framework is an architectural pattern that will separates an application into three main logical components which is nothing but model view and controller so a view will represents the presentation layer of the application model will represent the data and the business logic of the application and controller will acts as an intermediary between the model and view so this is about the mvc architecture and the question is like uh, write mvc architecture rules guidelines to place uh, identified mvc classes in a three tier architecture in detail so for this answer you have to refer the workbook okay or you can refer the youtube videos so where you can find in the mvc architecture uh, slide you can see this question like uh, how you can uh, derive the rules from the mvc architecture and how and how you have to place these all classes in three tier architecture in detail so in the evaluation for the prep 3 part 1 you have to refer the workbook or the youtube videos also you can refer and where you can find the rules for the mvc architecture write the rules first and then you can place them in three tier architecture okay next what is the contribution of ba in waterfall model so here stage wise in waterfall model how the contribution of ba will happen so that all uh, phases you have to write it so here is an example on how to write the uh, contribution of ba like first of all you can go with one table like uh, where you can write the stages first like in pre project planning project initiation uh requirements gathering requirement analysis design development testing and uat so these all are the fields where you have to write the activity like in pre project how will the ba will contribute in the project like he will be doing an analysis part like spot analysis gap analysis risk analysis enterprise analysis so these all things he will be doing before he could initiate the project so this is a activity which will be done by the ba and artifacts and resources who all will be involved in doing this such activity these thing you have to write in the artifacts and resources so likewise you have to think about like in pre project what all the activities he'll be doing and in planning how he'll be doing the planning part and how he'll be doing the project initiation how uh, requirement gathering will happen so for for all the stages you have to write the activities and also artifacts and the resources okay so in this way you can complete this ba contribution in project of the waterfall model okay next what is mean by conflict management and thomas kilman technique so first of all what is mean by the conflict management so conflict management is a process of resolving the conflicts or disagreements between the individuals or Uh, groups in a constructive manner and uh, this thomas kilman technique is a widely used tool for assessing the conflict resolution styles and guiding the individuals in selecting appropriate strategies to make conflicts and the five steps of conflict management are identify the conflict discuss the details agree with the root problem check for every possible solution for the conflict negotiate the solution to avoid future conflicts so first of all write what is meant by the conflict management try to write in more words here in this session we'll be telling about how we are just explaining on how to complete the uh, complete the answer for the evaluation and what kind of overview questions will be there and whereas in your document for the evaluation you have to be more clear about the answers and you have to be more depth in uh, giving the justification part as well okay so first of all write what is meant by the conflict management and why this thomas kilman technique is used so for this we have the five points which is there in the uh, ppt so this five point you can include in your evaluation in your document okay next so what are the reasons for project failure so simple a poor planning unclear objectives and requirements inadequate risk management poor communication scope creep lack of stakeholder engagement resource constraint technical challenges so these are the some reasons for the project failure here uh, for the evaluation in the document what you have to write is like 
you can include these points with some other points of your uh, thinking and then uh, you can write a definition about this like uh, for example what is mean by the poor planning in the sense you have to write a definition of it and you have to explain it to the evaluator likewise for all the points you have to write a definitions with some more points add some more points to this answer and then you can complete this answer okay next what kind of challenges will the ba will face in the project so unclear and unchanging requirements managing stakeholder expectations scope creep and scope management time and resource constraint quality assurance and testing documentation and knowledge management technology constraints and complexity so these are the some challenges will faced by the ba in the projects so try to write the definitions of each of the point here and you can go with the next one so next is what is mean by the document naming standard so a document naming standard is a systematic approach to assigning unique identifiers to various documents created and used throughout the development process so suppose here you have an example like suppose if we have a project with the id called proj123 and if we are working on the requirement specification document then the project id is proj123 document type is requirement req and version is 1.0 and date today's date you can give there and the document identifier could be proj123 hyphen req hyphen 1.0 hyphen date so this is a document naming standard okay next what are the do's and don'ts of business analyst so first of all this one uh, you will be getting in the first chapter only in the workbook like what are the do's and what are the don'ts is like first do's so consult an sme for any clarifications and requirements go to the client with a plain mind and no more assumptions and listen carefully and completely until the client is done and then you can ask your queries try to extract a maximum leads to the solution from the client himself and concentrate on the important requirements and question the existence of existence or question everything so these are the do's and don'ts is like never say no to the client there is no world called by default never imagine anything in terms of gui don't interrupt the client when he is giving you the problem never try to give solutions to the client straight away with your previous experience and assumptions okay so these are the do's and don'ts of a ba so here i have given five points in the uh, document in your answer sheet you have to include more points and be clear with the justification part for the evaluation okay next what is mean by package and subsystem so package means collection of components which are not reusable in nature and uh, for this example is like application development companies will work on the packages and subsystem means collection of components which are reusable in nature which is predictive development companies will work on the subsystem you can come up with the definition and a simple example for this answer next what is mean by the camel casing and its uses so a camel casing is a naming convention which is used in computer programming and it is used for naming variables functions and identifiers example like a camel case is like uh, the uh, first word starts with the lower case letter and each subsequent word begins with an upper case letter okay next Uh, what is meant by development server and what are the access does business analyst has so a development server will refers to a dedicated environment or server that is used during the software development process and it provides a platform for the developers and testers to build test and debug the application before they are deployed to a production environment and as a ba what kind of access we do have in the development server that all points you have to add there like we have limited access in the development server but the thing is like like uh, the read only documentation mode okay so the access will be there for the ba is like read only documentation mode and uh, only for the uh, some points only we have we do have the access in the development server next what is mean by data mapping so uh, data mapping is a process of connecting the data from one source to another and it's like creating a guide or a map that shows how the data in one place correspond to data in another place and this is especially important when you are moving the data between different systems or databases to ensure that the data stays consistent and accurate 
So this is uh, mean by the data map. And what is API? So an API means it is an application programming interface, which is a set of rules and tools that will allow the different software applications to communicate with each other. And it defines the method and the data formats that application can use to request and exchange information. So this is about the application programming interface. So these uh, 20, 20 to 18 to 20 questions will be there for the prep three part one guys. So you have to work on the document like uh, once you got the question papers, uh, first of all, try to uh, see the session recording and then you can find the answers for this, like how to answer in the evaluation, how you have to answer it in the document. And once you are clear with that in a sense, be prepared well and then book your slot for the uh, stages so that you can complete the particular stage. So this is all about the prep three part one. And tomorrow morning we'll be having the prep three part two. Okay.